Now what I want to call your mind back to is this question right at the top here. Okay, it was the laptop is depreciating, right? So it was, hey Shalina, do you mind getting that door for us? Thank you. It was a simple idea of compound interest, but in reverse, right? If stuff is getting less valuable rather than getting more valuable, same model, but we just tweak it ever so slightly, okay? Does anyone remember what did we cover on Friday? What was the most recent idea we looked at underneath this? It had a special name. It was a financial idea, right? It was superannuation, right? It's like, just go back to the previous page, okay? Now, the idea of superannuation is, is this thing here, right? Imagine if we took um, this $80,000 earning, just put it in, just put it in there. It's like, wow, I can save $80,000 every single year. Of course you can't, unless you're earning a lot. But this idea of something growing over time and continually adding money to, we can do the same idea and think about this in reverse, okay? What happens if we get to that point where we're like, okay, I can retire now, what are you going to do to that money? You've stopped working, you're going to start to draw out of that, right? It's, it's an investment that you've already got, and it's been earning money for you and interest and all that kind of thing, but now I'm like, I've stopped working, I've retired, I need to draw on that now. Does that make sense? So we're going to do this similar kind of thing. We're going to think about what happens when we turn the plus into a minus, okay? Now when you're getting repaid these things, and here's where your heading comes in, this superannuation becomes what we call, it's often called, an annuity. Right? Same idea, right? It's money that's being paid annually every year, but the direction of the flow of the money has changed. You're not putting money in anymore, money's coming out to you. Does that make sense? Now, as you can see, it's going to be based on this idea, but the numbers are going to go ever so slightly differently. Now, just like before, we'll be best served if we can think about this with a practical example. So I'm going to model this on the practical example we did on Friday, right? We pictured the person, I think it was like Robin and Robin or something from memory. They were putting money in and I said to you, hey, how long will it take to save up to a million dollars? Do you remember that? I think it was like 27, 28 years? 28 years. Some, some lifetime career, we got to a million dollars, amazing. Now I'm picking up from after that point, okay? So we have the million dollars. Let's write that down, okay? One million dollars, that's been saved. Okay, so now I'm going to ask some questions about well, what will happen when I'm now trying to draw the money out. We've got some facts here, so let's try and um, get this important information down. We withdraw $75,000 on the first day of every year, so this is how much we're actually going to use. Of course, in reality, right, you're not going to draw, it's like, I need $75,000 cash on the 1st of January. You're just going to do it gradually, yeah? But this is a model we can use which will be accurate enough for our purposes. Okay, so I'm going to go 75000 Withdrawn 1st of January, okay? Um, just as a point to remind you from superannuation, why do you think it matters when we actually withdraw the money? It's gonna, it's, it's gonna be for accuracy's sake, but more specifically, right? Um, have a look at the rest of the question. Not only are we taking money out, right? We're taking money out. It's still most of it in the bank, right? Or in the superannuation fund. So it's earning what? Interest, interest right? So when the withdrawal happens versus when the interest happens, kind of matters. It will make a difference to our calculations. So does, um, does interest accumulate uh, over like a year? Hmm. Yeah, so... Okay, okay, good question. Let's actually talk about that now. We've got an interest rate in the question, right? Is it uh, 4, I think? I, yeah, 4%. 4% yeah, per, per, per annum. Per annum. Now, this question, this question of when does it happen is crucial because it will change the equations that we get, okay? Have a think about this. If you're the bank, you're the bank, okay? When do you think would make sense as the time to pay interest? A year after... You start any interest? If we if we put aside for one second that whole idea of compounding daily, monthly, and all that, it's just a, a simplified version of the situation. We're just thinking about years, right? That money's got to be in the bank for some amount of time before I'm going to say, well, okay, I guess you've earned some interest, yeah. So therefore, what you can see is sort of implied in this is that this happens at the end of the year. I guess you could say 31st December if you like, right? So our order in my in our minds of what happens every single year is two things: withdrawal first at the start and then interest happens at the end, okay? Now occasionally, things will be different. They will specify in the question, they'll give you more language that tells you when these things happen, but for any other assumption, we can just work with this, okay? So read carefully, the question will tell you what's going on. Two questions that were being asked. What's the first one? How much will remain after 10 years? After 10 years, I wanna know, um, what is the state of my superannuation fund, okay? Question? 
question and you'll answer it. <laughs> Maybe. Do you want to ask it now and then we'll see if we... Because I want to know what the question is anyway. Okay, after 10 years, right? So that means, like, is it asking how much it will be after the interest in the account after 10 years? Or is it asking how much money after withdrawing 70000 that is a good question. Um, you're right, we will come to it. But I want you all to think about that actually actively. When we say after 10 years, at what point in the year makes sense to be able to say, oh, it should be this point or this point? Just have a think about what that one for a second. We will come to it. Okay. Just like with this uh, salary going up and the superannuation questions we did before, we've got to establish a pattern, right? So let's introduce some language, some notation that will let us do that. I'm going to call um, A of N. We keep using this um, quite frequently because it's a, it's a useful framework to, to talk about. Let's let that be the amount at the end of the nth year. That's messy. OK. So we're going to try and get to, I guess, the question will then be A10, right? That's the amount at the end of 10 years. Does that make sense? That's where I'm going to get to, but I've got a lot of work to be able to establish that actual equation, right? So I'm actually going to start nice and slow, just like we did the superannuation with, not even the end of the first year, like before that, where do things begin? A naught at the end of zero years, okay? Where does it begin? Well, we definitely start with a million, right? We definitely start with a million. But then immediately, something happens, right? Have a look. Uh, I need to start using this money, yeah? Let's imagine this is your first day of retirement. You're like, well, I need to pay rent. I need to buy food, right? So I need access to that money now. So not just is there a million there, we actually have to immediately subtract. subtract. We have to withdraw some money, right? So I'm going to take out that $75,000, OK? What is a million takeaway $75,000? Nine hundred. Nine. 25,000. Okay. And I'm just going to pause there for a minute and I'm going to point out that even though this is simpler, I'm actually going to use this original line going forward. You might say, why do that? Like, we can, calc we can evaluate this, why don't you use it? Well, I'm going to have you think about why this is a more useful line as we progress through the question. Let's go to the end of the year now. A1 is the end of the first year. So, withdrawals already happened. What's the other thing that happens? Interest. interest gets calculated, right? That's, that's this guy here, okay? So I take the previous amount, A0, and then I multiply it by 1.04. Do you agree with that? That's the original plus the interest, that's the 0 0.04, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, I just said that I'm going to use this top line rather than the figure that it actually evaluates to. Let's see what happens when I do that. I'm going to get this 1 million hanging out the front, did I write the right number of zeros? I'm always skeptical. Um, it gets an interest calculation applied to it. And then you also have the withdrawal, right? Oh. And that also gets an interest calculation applied to it. Are you okay with that? So how, does, uh, how is there interest to the 75,000? It's already out of the number. Ah, OK. Good question. Now. I want to repeat Ishan's question because it's, it's sort of counterintuitive. And especially if you're like me and didn't do don't do economics. It's kind of like, wait, what's going on here? Okay. Um, I think we would all be okay to say $925,000 if we multiplied that by 1.04. You'd all agree that's just that amount, it's grown. Is that okay? Does anyone want to go ahead and work it out? 962. Okay. Now, I actually don't care about what that number is equal to because A1 doesn't matter to me. I need A10. Okay. But I can say, well, if that, what you say again, 962. Okay. That amount, I can also calculate it by looking at the, these components and multiplying them by the interest as well. Do you agree? Like These two are the same, so therefore the numbers ought to be the same. It Except it is weird. It is weird because you're like, hold on, interest getting applied to money that you don't have. Why would this be helpful? Well, let's start to think about what happens as we progress. Yeah, Because what am I trying to do? Like, What was the point in me doing T1, T2, T3? I was trying to establish a pattern, right? I was trying to be able to say, I know what this is going to be, and therefore I can put it into here. Okay? Now, if I, every single line, just get a number out, uh, 962,000, and then 900 and whatever thousand, those numbers do not help me establish the pattern. It's these terms that help me establish the pattern. Does that make sense? Yeah. 